Lynn Fisher Folk, Ralph Fawn Williams, and East Anglian Folk Song, 1905 to 1952. My name is Paul Richards, trustee at Trujard, and I've always had a fascinating interest in Vaughan Williams and English folk song and how the North End fishing community was the source of so much of his music throughout his life. The arrival of King Karuna in February changed the world as we knew it, and all England's summer festivals of music and the arts have been cancelled. This July would have been the 70th anniversary of the King's Lynn Festival. My scheduled festival walk had St Nicholas Chapel amongst the destinations to highlight how the town's glorious historic buildings have enriched our annual feast of music and the arts, the settings for artists of international standing. One such who appeared in the early festivals was Ralph Vaughan Williams, 1872-1958, who collected folk song in the North End in 1905. Lynn's Fisherfolk and the composer Vaughan Williams became interwoven in a relationship of some importance in 20th century English music and social history. On the 6th of January 1905, he travelled by rail from London to Norfolk, hoping to find traditional songs still being sung by local people. England was sometimes declared by natives and foreigners alike to be a land without music, but a group of London-based folk song collectors were determined to prove otherwise and began to journey into the English countryside. Vaughan Williams was a contemporary of Edward Elgar, 1857-1934, and both men are credited with reviving the fortunes of English music. The former remains one of England's greatest and most respected classical composers, being a master of all forms of composition, from songs to chamber music, choral works and symphony. He found folk music as an undergraduate at Cambridge through the anthology English Country Songs, 1893. The simple and timeless beauty of the melodies enthralled him. And in 1904, he joined the English Folk Song Society, set up in 1998 by Cecil Sharp. Its members invited friends and supporters in the provinces to alert them if they knew of people still singing ballads and folk songs. It seems Vaughan Williams was invited by a local clergyman to visit villages in Marshland, just across the river of Great Oz at Lynn. Here, both John Whitby and Stephen Pohl, a sexton and farm labour respectively, sang songs for him, though he was disappointed that there were not more folk songs to be found, and returned to Lynn, where he lodged at a small hotel near the railway station. In Lynn, the young Dr. Williams was introduced to the folk singers of the close-knit fishing quarter, living in the streets and yards around the magnificent St. Nicholas Chapel, thanks to its curate called Arthur Huddle. This bustling and compact ancient community coexisted with the new docks and factories built within living memory in 1905. Its fisher fleet had been lost in the construction of the Alexandra Dock in 1869, and another harbour for their smacks had been excavated. In 1914, at least 180 fishing boats dependent on sail were registered at Lynn, employing 379 men and boys. They earned a living in the wash, catching shrimps, prawns, cockles, mussels, winkles, crabs, lobsters, sprats, and a little beyond the wash, whelks. Pilot Street was the high street of the North End until unfortunately truncated by the new John Kennedy Road in 1963. In 1891, it was home to 58 fishermen and their families. There were also bakers, grocers, butchers, tailors, and six taverns in the street. The North End was a self-sufficient and almost isolated part of the town and had its own football team. The enclosed yards of Pilot Street and North Street housed the majority of families. In 1901, North Place in North Street accommodated 104 people, including 17 fishermen. Across the street was Trujillo, with six cottages occupied by 20 people in 1901. Six fishermen, one whelk boiler, one net maker and one brush maker. Over just one week in the town, Vaughan Williams collected at least 61 folk songs in January 1905, the majority in the North End. 
He wrote down the tunes in his notebook and sketched in the words. Though his principal interest was listening to the singers, his principal interest when listening to the singers was the melody. He carefully recorded the exact words to reveal a musical legacy which he described as beautiful, as beautiful and vital now as it ever was. The young composer was greatly impressed with the songs performed by James Ducky Carter, age 61, particularly The Captain's Apprentice. Its haunting tune was used by Vaughan Williams for the opening theme of his first Norfolk Rhapsody, whose beauty and vitality span the 115 years since 1905. It tells the horrific story of a young boy on a sailing vessel, so maltreated by the captain that he died. It may have local origins. St. James's Workhouse, rebuilt on Exton's Road in 1856, is mentioned in the folk song, but it is uncertain whether it refers to Lynn. Of the folk songs Vaughan Williams heard in the town in 1905, its maritime heritage is unsurprisingly evident. On board a 98, which was a warship, a bold young sailor, homeward bound, heave away, and just as the tide was flowing, are all good example. The history of Lynn's fisher folk and sailors was largely transmitted through this rich oral tradition, which was in danger of being lost in the early 20th century. The public houses were the community hubs of the North End and the setting for music making and the singing of traditional songs, which expressed a sometimes harsh shared social experience. It seems certain that the Tilden Smith in Pilot Street was where Vaughan Williams heard the folk songs which so amazed him. It was a favourite first destination hostelry for thirsty fishermen coming ashore at the fisher fleet after spending days working in the wash. The young composer sat quietly in the corner with his writing materials and of course a pint of bitter. The contrast between the conservatively dressed and clean-shaven Cambridge academic and the bearded fisherman in thick woolen ganseys smoking clay pipes could hardly have been starker. Some public houses had music rooms with a piano. Sundays was a day of rests, so on Saturday nights licensees hosted lively sessions of music making and drinking. Vaughan Williams also visited families in their cottages to listen to both men and women sing folk songs, but there are no details about these fascinating encounters. William Harper, 1824 to 1906, lived in Trujard and sang eight songs to the composer, but probably in St. James's workhouse on Exton's Road, having died there in 1906. He made three or four trips to this large Victorian building in 1905 to listen to the singing of several former elderly fishermen and sailors. One was Drew Anderson, who had lived in North Street and sang a dozen songs for him. He had been a friend of Ducky Carter, who had so impressed Vaughan Williams before. Vaughan Williams returned to Lynn in 1906 to revisit a few of the singers in the North End and St. James's Workhouse. He was already working on the three Norfolk Rhapsodies. Rhapsody No. 1 premiered in 1906 and No. 2 and No. 3 in 1907, which all had their origins in North End folk song. The young composer was a perfectionist and revised Rhapsody No. 1 before revising Numbers 2 and 3, with the consequence that the latter is now lost and Rhapsody No. 2 had to be recomposed after his death to be performed. His Symphony No. 1, a sea symphony, was also shaped by his music experience in Lynn in 1905, which continued to influence his work over the decades. He often played symphonic, his often played symphonic impression in the Fen country also sprang from his visit to Norfolk. Four Williams became one of England's most admired and famous composers of beautiful music, which is melodic, melancholic, and timeless. In other words, essentially English. He should also be regarded as a musicologist who, who collected 800 folk songs and scholars have access to many of his learned lectures on the subject. It can moreover be said that he was a social historian who brought to, Lynn, who brought to life Lynn's fisher folk, whose rich culture was expressed through song and would have been otherwise largely lost. 
Vaughan Williams was back in Norfolk in September 1910 to lecture on English folk songs to music teachers and others in Norwich. He told his audience that he had the good luck to find a good many sailor songs in Norfolk, chiefly in King's Lynn. A clergyman in the town had taken him into some of the worst slums he had ever seen to meet some very hard working and very poor fishermen who sang to him when they could get away from their work. 47 years after his visit to collect folk songs in the North End, Vaughan Williams gave a lecture on East Anglian folk song during the 1952 King's Lynn Festival. His audience at the town hall included Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret. Dr. Williams was now 80 years old and recalled his time in the town in 1905. Here he found a clergyman who was intimate with the fishermen. This clergyman introduced him to them. This was the Reverend Arthur Huddle, the curate at St. Nicholas Chapel. And together they went into the North End to meet the fisher folk. Dr. Williams told his audience in 1952, I reaped a rich reward there. During his 1952 lecture at the town hall, a man's voice off stage interrupted Dr. Williams, who paused to listen, then asked his audience if a song so exotic could be English. This was The Captain's Apprentice, which he had first heard sung nearly 50 years before by a Lynn Fisherman. Such beautiful songs and ballads, he continued, had been performed by English people for centuries and belonged to us all as part of our national heritage. A 15-year-old Lynn High School girl called Gillian Martin also sang Ward the Pirate for the audience as well as the Cambridge undergraduate John Flower as above who sang the other song. Dr Williams emphasised that such songs would stand the supreme test of time and their eternal beauty will not fade. Vaughan Williams referred in his lecture to the reasons why he and his fellow folk song collectors in the early years of the 20th century had started their campaign. At that time, traditional English folk song was disappearing as rapid industrialization continued to break up historic communities and literacy, literacy was spreading. As a result, a flood of, as Vaughan Williams said, a flood of cheap and nasty verse allied to cheaper and nastier music was, was displacing traditional folk song. Two days after the town hall event, his lecture in July 1952, Sir John Barbaroli conducted the London Symphony Orchestra in a festival orchestral concert at St Nicholas Chapel. It included Vaughan Williams's Symphony in D Major. In the program notes, John Warwick wrote, the dominant influence in Vaughan Williams' own art has been that of English folk song. As early as 1905, he was collecting songs at King's Lynn, and this, with a love of English life and literature, has given birth to his fine and finest music. At the 1955 festival in St Nicholas, Sir John Barbaroli conducted the Halley Orchestra in another orchestral concert whose programme included five variants on Dives and Lazarus by Vaughan Williams, likewise influenced by the folk songs he had collected in Norfolk. The work of Vaughan Williams and his colleagues in the early 20th century in saving so many English folk songs has enriched national culture and social history, and Lynn has a prominent place in the story to be told. The visit of Vaughan Williams to the town in 1905 has also been an inspiration to local musicians and historians. Robert Galliard was head of music at Springwood High School and leader of his successful concert band. To celebrate its 20th in the year 2000 and 25th anniversary in 2005, Robert worked with the composers Malcolm Binney and Philip Spark, respectively, using the folk songs collected in the North End in 1905 and 1906 to produce two suites for the band called True Jard in 2000 and Songs of the East Coast Fishermen in 2005. As part of Lynn's 800th charter celebrations in 2005, a group of musicians and a historian came together 
to mark the centenary of the visit by Vaughan Williams to Lynn. Alan Helsman, Liz James, John Jackson, Jill Bennett, and Robert Timms, Robin Timms, sang the songs and Paul Richards spoke on the North End history. There were performances at the Tudor Rose Hotel in St Nicholas Street and the O's Amateur Sailing Club, now Ferry Lane Social Club in King Street. Besides the door to the former Tilden Smith public house on John Kennedy Road, a plaque was posted to record the significance of that public house in English folk song history. There is no doubt that Paul Williams went to that public house and met fishermen and listened to their songs. Ralph Vaughan Williams died in 1958 when a North End Society was formed to oppose the plans of the Borough Council for a new road which would cut through the historic Fisherfolk Quarter. A campaign failed, and the bulldozers, arri the bulldozers arrived in North Street later in 1958. Two of the six cottages at True Yard had survived the demolition of the overcrowded town yards in the 1930s because they had, they had been used for storage by the neighbouring shopkeeper. Pat Midgley and a group of North Enders saved these buildings on the corner of North Street and St Anne Street from almost certain demolition for road widening. Following a campaign to raise funds from English heritage amongst others and with the critical support of the Borough Council, the shop and household premises with the two cottages behind them were thankfully rescued and opened as Trujard Fisherfolk Museum in 1991. The North End Trust was established in 1989 to safeguard this independent community museum and important English heritage site, which was later extended by the acquisition of adjacent historic properties in 1995 and 2010, thanks to the National Lottery Heritage Fund and local fundraising, of course. In the ground floor gallery at Trujard can be found panels dedicated to the Fisher folk and Ralph Vaughan Williams. And there is archive material on this subject in the first floor Pat Midgley Research Centre.